Sonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Brandy here from Kit Guru, and this is my review of the brand new chair from Noble Chairs. It's the Hero Series. So the one that, uh, difference between this chair and the other chairs that they've got in the range is that the Hero is like a more generous size. So they've put some new armrests on it. It's also got a wider seat and a taller back as well. It comes in a few different variations. So there's a PU leather version, which is the one that I'm taking a look at. There's five different colors to choose between. So you can have blue, red, gold, black, or I've got the one that has the very nice white stitching. There's also one with a leather cover if you want something a little bit more premium. That one either comes in a black or a red option. Obviously there is going to be a bit of a price difference between those two because you have to do pay extra for having the leather cover. The PU leather version retails for around £350 and the leather version is going to set you back £580. So uh, without further ado, we'll jump straight into the review and to start it off, we're going to jump back in time and take a look at how I found the assembly of this chair. The chair arrived in a big box with plenty of foam padding that kept it safe during shipping. The chair did come with the tool and screws you need for assembly and I found the instruction booklet to be clear with plenty of pictures and I got straight to work on the first step. The Hero comes with one of the armrests pre-installed and the other you do have to attach yourself. This is a little bit different from the other Noble chairs that I've built as both of the armrests did come pre-installed. Uh, I did talk to Noble Chairs though and they confirmed the reasoning behind this is that so the larger Hero Chair fits into the same size box and that helps to keep the shipping costs down. However, I did find attaching the armrest very straightforward. After lining it up, I screwed it into place using the three supplied screws. Next, using four screws, I attached a tilt mechanism onto the chair base. After the tilt mechanism was attached, I placed the lever covers onto the metal handles. One of them was a little stiff, but I found with the right amount of force, it eventually slided on. The five wheels went into the wheel base reasonably easily, and I placed the hydraulic mechanism into the base before slipping the cover over the top. The next step was to connect the top of the hydraulics with the seat, which can be a little bit awkward to line up, but it did slide on easily once it was in the right place. The four screws for the chair back come pre-attached, so I unscrewed them before lining up with the chair base. The assembly instructions recommend carefully pulling the adjustment lever to change it to a 90 degree angle, but from previous experience the lever actually scares me slightly, so I did leave it alone and I attached the chair back at a slightly awkward angle. This would definitely be easier to do with someone to help, but once it was lined up the screws went in easily. The chair comes with two plastic side covers and I push them firmly into place before attaching them using one screw for each. The final step was to put the two soft pillows in the chair. The neck pillow slipped easily over the top and the lumbar pillow doesn't come with any straps so I simply placed it at the base of the chair. Overall I found this chair very straightforward to build and in total it took me about 25 minutes. 
So comfort wise, I found this chair to be really great for sitting in for long periods of time. It's definitely firm, but that means that it gives really good support. I think the real sort of like game changer feature about this chair is the integrated adjustable lumbar support. So you can basically just sort of like throw the pillow out. Uh, it's got this uh, knob on the side so you can adjust to how much support that you want. And I think it definitely brings like proper ergonomics into like the racing style gaming chair market, which is really what we need uh, I also found this chair to be nice and roomy as well it's got this sort of like relaxed shape so even though I'm quite a small person I definitely think it's going to suit people that might have a larger frame than me you can definitely tell it's built for sort of taller and wider people it's definitely going to suit a wide range of people or those of you that maybe like to feel less constricted and have plenty of uh, sort of space to move around as with other noble chairs on the market, the Hero does use dense molded cold foam. Uh, this is instead of like recycled scraps that you might find on cheaper chairs. It's definitely a firm material though, so it is quite intense at first. Uh, but like I found with my icon that I have been using for a little while now, the material does definitely sort of loosen up a little bit with time and it sort of molds to your shape and becomes a little bit more comfortable and not quite as firm. The benefit of using the cold foam though is that it definitely holds its shape better over time so it's going to continue to give you good support throughout the lifespan of the chair instead of like a cheaper chair that might sort of uh, sag and lose its shape over time. This chair does come with two pillows as well. So you get a lumbar pillow and the neck pillow. They're both coated in a very nice sort of uh, soft almost like velvety material uh, very soft and comfy uh, the uh, lumbar pillow is made of foam and this one's got sort of like a soft uh, squishy filling uh, the neck pillow I do really quite like it attaches to the chair using like an elastic strap it holds in place nicely I find it really nice to sort of uh, lean my head back on it does provide quite a good amount of support however with the hero the uh, neck support pillow isn't strictly necessary uh, because underneath it does actually have like memory foam built into the headrest itself uh, it, you don't really notice it that much but it is there so you don't actually have to use the neck pillow uh, the lumbar pillow on this chair I think is completely pointless, you might as well get rid of it <laughs> uh, because it doesn't really do anything, you don't need it because you've got the integrated lumbar support. The Hero can be adjusted in plenty of different ways and I definitely think that's one of the reasons as to why it's so comfortable. The inbuilt lumbar support I think is a real game changer and means we can finally wave goodbye to like those crappy lumbar pillows that come with a lot of the racing style gaming chairs. It's very easy to adjust, you simply twist the knob and the right hand side and you can vary it from none at all to me playing AD carry which is like I need all the support I can get. Uh, the two levers underneath the chair are very easy to reach so you can adjust the height and you can also lock and unlock the tilt mechanism. On the right hand side is where you'll find the sort of handbrake style lever to adjust the recline of the chair. It doesn't go back as far as some chairs so you can't really do like a PewDiePie-esque like backflip <laughs> but you can adjust it up to 135 degrees and if you do unlock the rocking tilt mechanism it will go back a further 11 degrees which I found really great for just sort of maybe laying back and having a quick nap or playing some games sort of relaxed with a controller. The sort of rockability of the tilt mechanism can also be adjusted by twisting the knob on the underside of the chair. You can change it so it sort of swings back quite easily or you can also make it quite stiff sort of depending on what weight you are. The hydraulic gas lift on the Hero adjusts the height by 8 centimeters. I'm 5 foot 7, I do definitely find noble chairs on the taller side. As with the other noble chairs on the lower setting, my feet just about touch the floor. I think it is definitely more suited to taller users and if you are shorter than me you will have to buy a shorter gas lift from noble chairs separately. The armrests on the Hero are really quite nice. Uh, they are made of the same sort of uh, soft plastic material as the other Noble Chairs, uh, but they are sort of an improved version over the Noble Chairs Epic series. They're very similar to the armrests that you'll find on the Icon. They have the same sort of 4D adjustability, so they go up and down, forwards and backwards, uh, inwards and outwards, and you can also tilt them in and out as well. Uh, however, they do seem to slide a little bit more easily and they do feel a little more um, higher quality. 
Aesthetically, I do think the Hero looks absolutely fantastic. Noble Charles have done a really good mashup of like the sporty racing style of the Epic series and the very sort of sleek adult design of the Icon chair. It's got a very nice sort of a contrast as well with the colour that I've gone from. I think the white diamond stitching really stands out on like the black background and it's all very neatly done as well. The overall branding isn't too sort of like in your, in your face. The Noble Chairs icon and the Noble Chairs name sort of blends really nicely into the overall design. I think comfort is definitely the most important thing when it comes to the chair but it is a piece of furniture that you're going to have in your home and I'm really glad that Noble Chairs have sort of like nailed the styling. As you'd expect, the overall build quality in this chair is excellent. It is definitely up there in price, so it's something you can expect. The faux PU leather feels very sort of thick and hard wearing, and I'm confident that it should sort of stand the test of time. It shouldn't sort of rip or tear while you're using it. It's got plenty of air holes in the seat uh, seat sort of area. I think it's something that Noble Chairs have brought in for the Hero series and I did find myself not getting too hot or sticky while sitting in the chair for a long period of time. The stitching that holds all that fabric together and sort of decorates the back of the chair is very neat and well done and I'm confident that it should, should sort of hold up to the general wear and tear of the chair without sort of fraying and coming undone. The steel frame of this chair is a bit thicker than you'll find on a cheaper chair and it feels sort of very sturdy and solid in general I mean you can tr tell if you like try and pick this chair up it weighs about 30 kilograms which is really quite heavy it's also really strong too because it has a maximum weight limit of up to 180 kilograms I also noticed that the wheelbase on this chair feels nice and strong and solid and heavy while I was building it. It definitely felt like it had some real weight to it. The wheels are also good as well and they glide easily on carpet or on wood flooring. I think that Noble Chairs have definitely taken a step forward with the Hero series. The overall design is really, really nice. It's a nice mix of like sporty and stylish and I would absolutely love to see this chair in an all white design. It's very comfortable and supportive and due to the larger size, I definitely think it will suit a wide range of people. It's certainly a little bit up there in price, but I do think it is a case of you get what you pay for as it does feel sturdy and well built and uh, high quality as well. Overall, I absolutely love this chair and I would really recommend it to those of you that want comfort and support in sort of a racing gaming style chair design. If you like this video from Kit Gear, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from Kit Gear, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to see more of our videos, remember to hit the bell icon so you get a notification every time a new video goes live.